Hello everyone, my name is Ova Harcourt and I am a technical marketing engineer in the Switching TME team. Today I will be talking about software maintenance upgrades, which is Cisco's open iOS XC patchability solution. From time to time, we know that software releases may contain bugs that could either be network impacting or pose as a security risk to an organization. Now to address or fix these bugs, we would usually perform a software upgrade because these upgrades contain bug fixes for the prior release. However, in the case of an urgent or emergency bug fix, performing a full software upgrade might be too time consuming, traffic impacting, and costly for an organization. So instead of performing a full software upgrade, a software maintenance upgrade can be performed to address these emergency bug fixes. A software maintenance upgrade, popularly known as SMU, is a software patch delivery unit or package that once installed and activated, provides a point fix for a critical issue in a given software release. It is also called patching. Patching is the process of applying a SMU fix to a software. The SMU file, also called patch file, is tailored to address a specific vulnerability in the software. So why do we need SMUs? Software upgrades are notable for being expensive and network impacting, which inevitably can lead to business loss. Also, for software rollouts, the physical presence of engineers is required, and when there isn't enough staff, the process of rollouts could be slower, consequently impacting the business. Additionally, bug analysis and certification are required for the development of new code, which can cause a delay in the case of an emergency fix situation. The use of SMOOS reduces these limitations by being a ready and fast point fix for bugs and vulnerabilities. So when will you use SMOOS? Software maintenance upgrades are performed when there are security vulnerabilities that pose as a risk to the business. These vulnerabilities could either be Cisco vulnerabilities or open source vulnerabilities. We also use SMOOS to address critical issues in which there is no workaround, an attack case has been created and approved for patching. Some of the requirements and properties of SMOOS are, SMOOS are provided on a per release, per component basis and can be platform specific. SMOOS are not a substitute for extended maintenance releases, Rather, it is a method for fixing bugs and implementing a PCERT fix in a given release. SMOOS are only supported on extended maintenance releases and platform and release approval are required. Unlike ISSU, SMU is not a way to go from one software release to another. There are two types of software maintenance upgrades called Hot SMU and Cold SMU. A Hot SMU is a SMU that after installing and activating, a system reload would not be required. This process is called hot patching. Cold SMU, on the other hand, requires a system reload or reboot of the system, which usually disrupts the flow of traffic. This process is called cold patching. A good point to keep in mind is that the nature of a bug or vulnerability to be fixed determines whether a hot or cold SMU will be performed on a switch. Ultimately, we want to perform hot patching, where traffic is not disrupted and bug fixes are applied seamlessly, but some features may require a reload for bug fixes to be applied, so a cold SMU will be required. In the Catalyst 9000 family, there is an exception. Only hot patching can be performed on the Catalyst 9200 family of switches, being the 9200, 9200L, and 9200CX. SMU files can be downloaded at software.cisco.com. You can determine what type of SMU is installed on your switch by running the command show install package and then the SMU file name. This will show you if it's a hot SMU or a cold SMU by the SMU type. To create a software maintenance upgrade, we would usually follow this workflow. This process starts with a customer placing a call to TAC about a defect. If the defect does not exist, TAC will file a defect. Assuming the defect does exist, TAC will check if it is fixed in a particular release or not. If it is not fixed, TAC will check to see if there is a workaround. And if there is no workaround, they will also check if it is service impacting or not. If the defect is service impacting, then a SMU request can be filed and then would go through SMU council approval and then the SMU can be created. Once the SMU is created, it will go through multiple tests 
by the dev engineering, build engineering, and testing team. And finally, the SMU is posted on ccosoftware.cisco.com. And it will tell you what type of SMU it is, if it will require a reload or not. On our Catalyst 9000, software maintenance upgrades can be performed in two ways, using either CLI and now also using Cisco DNAC. On CLI, there are two ways in which we can perform a software maintenance upgrade, a three-step process and a one-step process. The three-step process involves three commands run separately, providing you with the ability to control the upgrade process and rollback. On the other hand, the one-step process involves a single command to perform a complete smooth process. Now, using Cisco DNAC, we can perform software maintenance upgrades seamlessly on our switches without the need for CLI over a simple number of steps. DNAC supports patching on switches with a minimum release of 16.12 and higher and are applicable for all Catalyst 9000 products. Some of the prerequisites of performing SMU with DNAC are a DNAC version of Guardian 2.3.3, an iOS XE version of 16.12 and onwards, and also SMU can only be performed on the Cisco Catalyst 9300 and 9400 series of switches. A DNA Essentials license level is also required and the switch operation mode should be install mode. For the purpose of this presentation, I will demonstrate a vulnerability on a 17.3.4 iOS XE release, which enables an unauthenticated user elevate privileges to a level 15 on a device. And for this demo, I will be using Cisco DNAC to fix this vulnerability. So to begin this demo, I will log onto my switch, and then I will run the show version command to see the version of iOS existing. So we have 17.3.4. And next, I'm gonna go into user mode using the disable command. And then I will run the command that shows the vulnerability on this iOS, which is the show tech supports unprivileged wireless command. So after running this command, it returns a very large output and I'll break this output and then from here, if I run conf T, you see that we can have access to make um, changes on the switch. So we'll go to DNAC, click on design, click on image repository, and look for our switch here. So for this um, demo, I will be using a 9300 switch. So when I click on the switch, I will go to the image I currently have and click on add-on. So for the purpose of this demo, I already downloaded my smooth file and I'm just going to golden tag it here. So when I perform the image upgrade, the smooth file would be upgraded alongside the image update. So after golden tagging it, I will go to the hamburger, click on provision, click on inventory, and look for our switch here. So I'll click on the checkbox after finding the switch, click on actions, software image, and image update. So we're gonna click on the checkbox here. And as you can see, the smooth file has been added to the original um, image here. So I'll click on next, hit next again in the subsequent sections. And then on this page, I will click on now so that the software activation would happen immediately after update. So I'll click on next and then click submit. Hit continue here. And then the image update has started. So to view this process running in the background, I will click on my switch, go to image updates, and then image update status. So we can see that this is happening at the background and to get more details, you can click on your switch and you can see that smooth distribution has happened and currently smooth activation is happening in the background. So this process usually takes about two to five minutes to complete. So after it's successful, then we will go back to our switch to test out if the vulnerability has been fixed. 
So on our switch, we'll kind of do the same process that we did initially, log on to the switch, um, show the version to confirm that it's been smooth patched. And then after that, we will run the disabled command, go back to user mode, and then we will run the command that shows us this vulnerability, break the output, and then run ConfT to see if we have access to global config mode. So you see it does not let us, so it's been fixed. Software maintenance upgrades are supported on Catalyst 9000 models on a minimum release of 16.12. They cannot be installed via PNP, they are not supported via ISSU or FSU, and the Catalyst 9200 family supports only cold patching with SMU. Thank you.